Well, I think there's a very practical suggestion you know, in the sense of try it. Uh, because quite often we are looking for the big system to have the all-encompassing answer to everything. But I think what we can see, for example, in EMA, I mean, it's been a long process since 2005, since patient groups were involved all across the board uh, in EMA committees. And there's always a big discussion around patient involvement. Could it be more? Is it adequate? And so on. But I think by, let's say, taking courageous decisions and involving patients, the feedback that we get today that the contribution is essential, is very valuable. Patients are educated, um, patients are training themselves, patients are willing to bring in their voice in a, on a competent way. Um, and I think that has been one of the crucial success factors also on our end because we, as a, as a community, as a whole, invested a lot into educating our community to be a valuable partner for these kind of processes. We've been watching in terms of orphan drugs, um, what happened in England where they developed Agnes, um, which was specifically for ultra rare conditions where you know, the, the assessment wasn't about a quality or life years gained, uh, the criteria was different. Um, and as part of that criteria, patient involvement featured heavily. Um, and that's a system that we, we thought was good. Scotland is another system that we've looked at um, and we've done actually a lot of work with Karen Facey. Um, who is a health technology assessment expert uh, in Glasgow and um, who's actually doing a piece of work for HTAI at the moment and, and I think as a result of knowing her we've been involved in that piece of work where she's developing a form which could be used by patient organisations and HTA agencies as a tool to submit on HTA so this form will be a template that could be used right across the board.